Hey friend, Tim Shear here. Welcome back. So today we're going to talk about a fun, exciting subject, anger and guilt and shame, <laughs> right? And how does that, uh, what does that have to do with losing weight? So us humans, we don't like pain. We don't like feeling uncomfortable. And it's challenging because life is full of pain and discomfort. Now, it doesn't have to be full of suffering. That is something that we do in our own head where we keep the pain going because we don't know how to shift our beliefs or change the way we're caring for ourselves. And I know in the first video we talked about um, how your past influences your present and you know the importance of upgrading your beliefs. So the next thing we want to talk about are your emotions, right? So many people over the years had, had so many struggles with losing weight because of guilt that they had in their past or because of anger or because of a feeling of shame or even feeling um, scared to get thinner again. So I thought I would make a short little video and just give you some insights based on almost 30 years of doing this so that um, maybe it will help you as you continue towards achieving your goal, right? Or joining us for our, you know, one of our live coaching programs so that you can have the full experience. So when it comes to, we'll start with guilt. Okay, a lot of times um, people come to me and they have a huge heart, right? Their heart is so big and that means that they're very caring and very giving and they're really good at taking care of everybody else and they really suck at taking care of themselves, <laughs> right? And that's because they have t been taught usually by their mother growing up, maybe their father, but typically it's been by their mom growing up that you're not supposed to focus on yourself or maybe it was uh, your religion that got misunderstood. And so as a child, you got the message, clear message that, who do you think you are? You're not supposed to be focused on you. That's a sin. You're supposed to be taking care of everybody else. And boy, did that message get mixed up, okay? Because it's so important to love yourself, to care for yourself, to support yourself, because if you don't do it, nobody else probably will either. And so, you know, I have a rule in life. Don't take advice on how to be happy from people who aren't. Right? Don't take advice on how to be successful from people who aren't. And so a lot of times our caregivers weren't very happy or they didn't know how to take care of themselves in a proper way or they had the same issue that you have and they just passed it on to you. So we got to stop taking that advice. Right? We got to let go of some of that childish or childhood advice and start to decide what is best for you. But in doing so, we, it brings up a lot of guilt because we have been programmed for a long time to feel a certain way. We feel really uncomfortable putting boundaries in place and telling somebody no, even though we desperately need to, even though it would be the right thing to do for you and for that person who needs to learn boundaries. But if we don't get around the guilt or the shame that comes up, because shame is what comes up afterwards, People will have a breakthrough and then they'll start to take care of themselves and then all of a sudden the shame will come up and shame can come up because they feel like they're somehow violating um, somebody's trust in them, right? Or like they're doing something bad, even though taking care of yourself is never a bad thing. Uh, but there are people out there that will try to manipulate you and cause you to think that it is just so that they get you to keep doing what they want you to do. Now that's very selfish, right? And so we've got to protect ourselves from people like that even if we are related to them. So shame also comes up if we have this false idea that somehow there's something wrong with us, that we're bad. Not that we made a bad choice, but that we are bad ourselves, like we're not good enough, like we're damaged goods. And that, of course, is ridiculous too. That is a false lie that sometimes gets in our mind and then we can't shake it. We start to feel like there's just something, you know, we're just not supposed to be happy. And who said that, right? That's, no, that's not a written rule, <laughs> okay? That's not something that's tattooed on your arm. That is a belief, that's an idea that probably came from somebody who was very immature putting that idea in you or not protecting you or you made that idea up, you kind of made a jump and assumed that whatever situation that you went through, it happened because you weren't enough. Like I talked to a lot of uh, people that their parents got a divorce and they still think it was somehow their fault. When you realize, no, it's the adults. The adults are the ones that are making these decisions. The kids are innocent in this. But the kids don't know that. They're just uh, soaking in all these ideas, these stories, these beliefs, um, and thinking that it's somehow them. 
or a, a, an adult said something like that. And, you know, I've heard people say that, well, yeah, my father told me my mom left because I wasn't good enough uh, for her to stick around. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that is horrible, right? Now, that is also a lie. That little girl, the, you know, she was a grown woman when she told me that, but that little girl um, had nothing to do with it, with her mother's immaturity or her mother's decision to abandon, right? But as a child, we don't know that. We don't have that perspective and we don't have much influence in the situation. As adults, though, we do. And it's a matter of taking back our power. Now, I've also had clients who have been sexually abused and have bad, had other situations occur where they still feel like somehow it was bad or it was their fault or they have all this shame. And we need to clear that out because when you go through something like that, that is, you know, that is never our fault, right? That's called blaming the victim. And that is a lie that we need to clean up and get rid of. But it will influence us in a big way because I've met a lot of people over the years, a lot of women who said they were afraid of getting, letting go of the excess weight because it would get the attention of men and that made them really scared, right? Or I've had other women that said, you know, I don't want to get thin because um, it brings up guilt inside of me because I'm not sure if I had somebody else flirting with me, I might not be able to turn them away and I don't want to cheat on my spouse and so I'm just going to try to keep myself unattractive. Okay, so there's all kinds of what we call secondary gains, secondary benefits. There are reasons why we act the way that we act. And even when we are feeling guilt or shame, if there was a positive intention behind that, which, you know, there might be a positive intention behind anything, but it's not serving you. Okay, it's not serving you in a healthy way. But the positive intention of feeling guilty or shame might be so that um, so that it keeps you behaving in a certain way. So you don't lose that love, right? That would be the positive intention. I don't want to lose my parents' love. I don't want to lose my spouse's love. I don't want my friends to go away from me. I know people that have lost weight and they were so expecting their friends to rally around them and support them and high five them. And in fact, the opposite happened. Their closest friends were saying, oh, why don't you just eat and live a little, right? Or what, you think you're all that now just because you lost some weight? And it's not because you've done anything wrong. It's because your friends are feeling insecure now because you're growing and changing and they're not. And instead of them saying, being inspired and saying, I'm going to do this with you, instead what people do is, some people, is they start to drag you back down, try to get you to gain the weight, which is what some of my clients said. They said, I was so disappointed or my husband or, or wife was being so... Um, insecure and we were fighting and they became so jealous all the time that I said to heck with it I'm just gonna put the weight back on and that's exactly what they did and they were really unhappy about that and really angry because they felt betrayed by their spouse or their friends so the emotions get so complicated that when people say I want to lose weight I need to just stop eating cookies there is so much more to it than that and that's why I developed the path to emotional freedom program so that we could do a clearing with the emotions so that we could do a clearing so that people feel strong inside, healthy, happy, confident, and secure. You build a strong foundation to build from. And then you can create new, that's what I created the body transformation course for, so that people can um, you know, really train, train your mind to be able to eat the right foods at the right times in the right amounts and enjoy water and love fitness and, and you know, just live that healthy, happy, fabulous lifestyle. But it's the emotional part that I focus on more than anything else. Because if you don't focus on that or address that, then, you know, it just doesn't seem like you'll ever get exactly what you want. And I've been at this game long enough, helping enough people to recognize that you've got to make sure that on the inside you are healthy and happy and strong. You've got a strong set of beliefs and you've let go of the guilt, the shame, the anger. Sometimes we hold on to our anger because it feels more empowering than being scared or feeling stressed. And also when we're angry, it gives us a sense of almost like um, justification or empowerment, you know, because we're mad, right? And it just justifies why, you know, we've been wronged. It also keeps it alive, right? So that it's like, if I let go of my anger, I'm afraid I might forget what happened and then it could happen again, right? Or if I forgive somebody, it means that, um, that they are, uh, it's okay that it happened and, you know, and we can be pals again. And that is false. That's completely false. We get things so mixed up sometimes in our head. 
You know, when you forgive someone, it's not for them, it's for you. It frees you, it releases you from those negative ties that bind you to that people, to that person, those people or those events, right? It frees you. And holding the grudge means that you're the one holding it and you're the one being punished. And that's not fair. It's like kicking yourself when you're already down. So, and it certainly does not mean that it was okay that it ever happened. That's ridiculous, okay? But what it means is that you're healing from it because you're tired of being a survivor and you don't want to be angry all the time because it wears you out. And so instead, you're going to be a thriver. You're going to free yourself from these things. You're going to learn from the past. You're going to create a more empowering future and you're going to feel more secure in the present because we're going to train your mind and your emotions to feel this way. And it is a thousand percent possible and it's possible for you. Okay, so I've helped people that have been through the worst of the worst. My specialty for a long time was helping people with post-traumatic stress and I got really good at it. And my clients have been through the worst of the worst and I have seen them repeatedly triumph over it no matter what they've been through and it's been inspiring, right? The human spirit can prevail over anything. I mean, it's really remarkable and you can too. So no matter what's happened in the past, what's more important is what are you doing in your mind to keep it going? And what do we need to do to shift the beliefs and then change your perspective so that you feel more secure and happy and at ease? And so that you're able to take the weight off and feel very confident and secure about it so that you're able to keep the results that you get. And then how to make sure that we put boundaries in place so that nobody tries to sabotage you or if they try, it ain't gonna work. They can try to push your buttons, but if you don't have the buttons, then they can push all day long and you'll just be like, that's cute, <laughs> okay? Talk to the hand, all right? And so we're gonna just have a different approach and that's why it works so much better. So if you struggle with anger or depression or guilt or shame or all those icky feelings that we have, I want you to know there is a bright light at the end of this tunnel and we can start to change the way that you're feeling lightning fast. Now in the third video and then one I'm gonna send you next, um, we're gonna talk a little bit more about this. So. In the meantime, I want you to just say this affirmation to yourself because it's very healing. And the affirmation is this, no matter how scared I am, no matter how frustrated I feel, I'm fully loving and accepting myself. I fully love and accept myself. And if you just wanna say that all day long, I fully love and accept myself no matter what. I am safe, I am good. I fully love and accept myself no matter what. I am safe, I am good. If you gotta tap it in there, I fully love and accept myself no matter what. I am safe, I am good, right? Tap it right in there. And what'll happen is you'll start to feel that way over time. Maybe not at first. At first it might feel real weird or uncomfortable, like a new pair of shoes. But once you get into it for a little while, then it starts to feel really good and you're not gonna wanna let go of that, right? And so whenever I find a really good pair of shoes, I buy two pairs <laughs> because I wanna make sure that I hang on to that good feeling. And we can do this emotionally for you as well. So anyway, write that down, write down that affirmation. I fully love and accept myself no matter what right? Or you can just say it in here. I am safe. I am okay. I am safe. I am okay. I am safe. I am okay. <laughs> Dance around, get your body into it and you'll start to feel better. And then if you need some extra help, I'll help you. We'll get in there and we'll start to make things right for you and you'll feel happier and healthier than ever before. So, all right, I'll see you in the next video and make today a sure success and I'll talk to you soon.